Okay, so I was trolling around the internet and I happened to see this thing over here, the induction heating module. And I was thinking by myself, five bucks, let's get one and see if it's good for anything. So I've received it. And word of warning though, if you are looking for one of those, look, there's the same thing over here. Somebody's trying to flog for $20. So, um, and I've seen these even cheaper on AliExpress, like $4.15 or something like that. This is on uh, Banggood. Anyway. If you look at the, um, what people are saying about these things, there's some warnings there that you actually should put it on a power supply and switch it on quickly because apparently the oscillator in there needs a kickstart and if you put it on a like I put one on my bench power supply and it has like a soft start feature and um, now I set it for um, a certain number of amps so it didn't do any harm to it but it didn't oscillate and it was drawing like nine amps or something like that permanently so I quickly switched it off so <clears throat> what I've actually done is I have mounted it in a little box over here and um, drilled some holes on the side the coils coming out it's got some uh, input over here some banana plugs and there's a switch on the top lid over here so I can close it back up again There we go. So I just got a on switch there. So let's hook it up to a power supply. I've got an LED, 12 volt LED power supply, which can uh, handle up to 33 amps. This thing will draw, um, I've seen it draw up to uh, over 15 amps, depending on what you shove into this um, little coil over here. So keep that in mind. If you have a bench power supply that can only it can only supply 10 amps, um, you will be limited. So let's hook it up. Let's hold on. Okay, so that is, this is the power supply I'm using over here. Now it has a little fan in there. I don't know if the noise filter takes it out, but I'm going to stick it on the side and put it over there out of the way. Now, this power supply is actually drawing 9 watts of power without actually uh, with this thing switched off. I've got it in a watt meter over there, so you want to have a look. Let's switch it on. Let's switch it on, and now it is drawing 29 watts without anything in there. Uh, let's poke. Let's get the camera. This camera here seems to be giving me problems. It gets out of focus all the time. All right. Yep, glowing red. Actually, let me uh, zoom in on that. Hold on. It's interesting that uh, when I first now it's just 23, 32 watts. Yeah, so if I just put a piece of steel wire in there, you can see it is glowing red. So that's working. What about a little bit thicker wire? Now he's drawing 113, 117, 121 watts. So it's glowing red, so that's working. Here's a little tubular thing, which is actually an end of a brush. There she goes, pretty quick. All right, so let's have a look what happens if we put 
a thick piece of steel in there. This is probably about at least eight millimeters thick. Hundred and forty seven watts. Hundred and fifty watts. This will take take a while. This is a big chunk of metal and of course it's long so it absorbs the heat. So it is doing it. Yep, it's glowing red on the end there. So obviously um, it has you know, it's only a small unit, it has some limitations, but it works really good. I figured that um, I can use it occasionally to heat something up, as long as it's steel, of course, and that it will, um, be I can actually use it to anneal certain things and grind them up and heat them up again and harden them and stuff, so I think that'll be useful. So let's have a look what the frequency is on it. I'm going to switch it off. All right, and let me have a look. Okay, so here we are measuring the frequency of the oscillator there on the uh, coil, and it says it's 197 odd kilohertz. So it's a sine wave, and um, I thought it'd be interesting to see what the frequency is. I've got a piece of wire and a 100 to 1 probe laying on top of the coil right now, as you can see here. And what have we got? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, what, what, 5 volts, peak to peak or something. Anyway, it seems to be working all right. And I think it could be useful for heating up certain things, but of course it'll only heat up steel things. As you can see when I put a coil of copper wire in there, it doesn't heat it up at all. It just um, it barely, you know, it doesn't even get warm. It's just, it's, um, <clears throat> it works on a magnetic field, which actually makes the um, whatever magnetic material we put in there makes their atoms you know jiggle back and forth really quickly so they heat up that's basically how it works I think anyway I thought I would try one of these things out and um, I'm actually surprised that uh, it works reasonably well for small pieces of metal and might come in handy I'm not sure well, we'll see if I use it in some of my other videos you'll see it anyway that's all I've got, just a quick little video on this thing, and um, I'll see you guys later. Oh, and don't forget to um, subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Bye-bye.